What if the skyscrapers of the future weren't made of steel and concrete, but wood? Not flimsy, splintering wood you'd expect from garden fences or furniture, but an engineered form of timber so strong it can rival concrete and so sustainable that it's being hailed as one of the best tools we've ever had for building greener cities. That material is cross-laminated timber, or CLT. And over the last decade, it's been quietly reshaping the world of architecture and construction. So today, we'll be diving into CLT in detail. We'll look at what it actually is, why many architects and builders are turning to it, and whether it really can be the future of sustainable building. But before we get into all of that, let's start simple. What exactly is CLT? Well, CLT is cross laminated timber. It's a type of engineered wood product. But unlike traditional timber, which is just sawn lumber cut directly from a tree, CLT is built up from many smaller pieces of wood bonded together into a massive solid panel. Imagine taking planks of wood, stacking them side by side to form a layer, then laying another layer of planks on top, but rotated at 90 degrees from the one below. If you keep repeating this, alternating directions, you eventually end up with a thick, multi-layered panel. Each of these layered is glued together under pressure, forming a huge, stable slab of timber far stronger than the sum of its parts. The criss-cross layering is where the cross-laminated part of its name comes from. And it's also the secret to CLT's strength and stability. By rotating each layer, the wood grain runs at alternating directions, which means the panel resists warping, twisting and splitting. In fact, CLT is just remarkably stable. It holds its shape even under very heavy loads and changing weather conditions. In practice, this means that CLT panels can be made up to three meters wide and over 15 meters long, and it still remains straight, true, and reliable. That makes them suitable for walls, floors, and even the structural cores of buildings. Compared to traditional timber beams or planks, CLT behaves much more like a solid concrete slab, except for obviously it's lighter, it's easier to work with, and as I'll show you later, it's far more sustainable. One of the most striking things about CLT is that it effectively allows us to build with wood at a scale we never thought possible. For centuries, timber has been used for houses, barns, and smaller buildings. But with CLT, architects are now designing mid-rise apartment blocks, offices, and even tall towers with structural wood as its primary material. But I guess you're probably thinking that isn't wood flammable? What about fire? And how could wooden panels possibly replace something as tough as reinforced concrete? And these are completely fair questions, and I'll cover that the deeper we go. But for now, CLT is not just wood in the way that you might imagine it. It's carefully engineered material designed to be strong, predictable, and versatile enough to use in large-scale modern construction. In short, CLT is wood reimagined for the 21st century. But to really understand why CLT is so effective, I think it helps to look at the process behind it. So it all starts with ordinary softwood boards like spruce, pine, and fir harvested from sustainably managed forests. These boards are kiln dried to reduce moisture content, which helps prevent shrinkage and decay later on. Next, the boards are sorted and planed, making sure that each one is uniform in thickness and smooth enough for strong bonding. They're then laid side by side to form the first layer of the panel. Once this first layer is complete, a second layer is placed on top, but crucially rotated at 90 degree angles. Adhesive is applied to each layer and the process continues until the desired thickness is reached, which is usually between three and seven layers. After layering, the stack is pressured together under enormous pressure. This step makes sure that the glue bonds tightly and layers behave as one solid piece of timber. 
which is incredibly stable, with the cross-grain structure distributing loads evenly in both directions. The final stage is the precision cutting. Using computer-controlled machines for openings for doors and windows and service routes, and exact dimensions are cut straight into the panel. This means that the panels arrive on site as ready to install building components, which reduces the need for messy, noising and cutting during that construction process. The result is a material that combines the natural warmth of wood with the consistency and performance of modern engineering. The CLT panels are effectively giant prefabricated building blocks ready to be craned into place like oversized pieces of Lego. But why exactly is it becoming so popular in architecture and construction? Well, the first big reason is the strength to weight ratio. CLT is surprisingly strong given how light it is. Compared to concrete and steel, it can deliver the same structural performance with far less weight. This makes it ideal for projects where weight is an issue like adding new floors to existing buildings without overloading the foundations. Secondly, CLT allows for prefabrication and speed. Since panels are precision cut in factories, construction on site is fast and efficient. Tire walls and floors can be assembled in a matter of days rather than weeks. This reduces the noise, dust and disruption which is often common in construction sites, particularly valuable in dense urban areas. Thirdly, CLT actually has impressive fire resistance, which might sound counterintuitive, but large timber panels actually perform very predictably in fires. When exposed to flames, the outer layer of the wood chars, creating a protective barrier that insulates the inner layers and slows down combustion. Over many tests, CLT structures have actually performed as well or even better than steel, which can buckle and fail suddenly when exposed to high heat. Another major benefit is aesthetics. Many architects appreciate the natural warmth and beauty of exposed timber surfaces. Instead of hiding structure behind layers of plasterboard, CLT allows the structure itself to be celebrated creating interiors that feel warm and calm and human-centered. So when you put all of these together, strength, speed, safety, aesthetics, it's just no wonder that CLT is attracting so much attention. But perhaps the most important factor driving interest in CLT today is sustainability. The construction industry is under increasing pressure to reduce its carbon footprint. Cement and steel together account for about 15% of global CO2 emissions, which means finding alternatives is essential if we're actually going to be serious about tackling climate change. And this is where CLT shines. First, producing CLT requires far less energy than producing concrete or steel, obviously. The process of drying, cutting, gluing timber is much less carbon intensive than firing kilns all the time or smelting ore. Timber itself is a carbon store that trees absorb CO2 as they grow. And when harvested for CLT, the carbon is locked into the building for decades, even centuries. In effect, CLT buildings act like giant carbon banks that sequester greenhouse gases that would otherwise remain in the atmosphere. And when sourced responsibly from sustainably managed forests, CLT is renewable. New trees can be planted to replace those harvested, creating a cycle of growth, use and regrowth that's, far, again, far more sustainable than mining or quarrying raw materials. And on top of all of this, CLT fits perfectly into the circular economy. Panels can be reused, can be repurposed, can be recycled, even at the end of the building's life. Even offcuts from manufacturing can be used for biomass and particle board, which minimizes waste. Of course, sustainability depends on careful forest management, responsible supply chains, and ensuring the adhesives used in production are low in toxicity. But compared to 
conventional materials, CLT offers a radically lower carbon footprint, making it one of the most promising tools for creating climate-friendly buildings. To see what CLT can do though, I think it will be helpful if I show you some of the most exciting examples already built around the world. So one of the landmark projects is the Brock Commons Tallwood House in Vancouver, Canada. Completed in 2017, this 18 storey student residence was at the time the tallest CLT building in the world. The structure went up in 70 days, which is obviously an astonishing pace for a high rise. And it perfectly demonstrated how CLT could deliver both speed and sustainability without compromising safety or quality. Another great example, I believe is pronounced Njostene in Norway. It stands at 85 meters tall and it was completed a couple years later than the other building in 2019. And it's currently one of the tallest timber buildings in the planet. It uses a mix of CLT and glue lamp and it's become one of the global symbols of what timber construction can achieve in terms of scale, ambition and design. So where does this leave us? Well, cross laminated timber is a material that takes one of humanity's oldest building resources, wood, and reinvents it for the 21st century. It's strong, versatile, beautiful, but maybe more importantly, it's totally sustainable. Closer to home in the UK, there's Dalston Works in London, which is one of the largest buildings in Europe. I'd love to go one day for the channel. This 10-storey mixed-use development makes extensive use of CLT panels, reducing construction time significantly, while also cutting carbon emissions compared to other traditional methods. These projects show us that CLT isn't just a niche material, it's already being used in real, large-scale developments across housing, offices and public buildings. Looking ahead, the potential for CLT is just enormous. Researchers and architects are exploring how it can be used for even taller buildings, with designs for timber towers reaching 30 storeys or higher. Some proposals even envision skyscrapers largely made of wood, combined with a few other materials where necessary, to dramatically cut the embodied carbon of our cities. But beyond height, CLT could reshape the construction industry in more subtle ways too. Because it's so lightweight and prefabricated, it can open up new opportunities for urban infill projects, rooftop expansions, or rapid housing developments. And in parts of the world struggling with housing shortage, which as I look around the world seems to be everywhere right now, CLT could provide a faster and greener way to deliver these much needed homes. But it's obviously not all without its challenges. Scaling up production means ensuring forests are managed responsibly and that the adhesives used remain environmentally safe. Building codes in many countries still favour steel and concrete, which makes it much harder to get approval for tall timber structures. But as more successful projects are completed and the data builds up on performance, these barriers are beginning to fall. Step by step, CLT is carving out a place in the future of construction. So where does that kind of leave us now? Well, CLT is a material that takes one of humanity's oldest resources in wood and reinvents it for the 21st century. It's strong and it's versatile, and more importantly, it's sustainable. At a time when the construction industry urgently needs to cut its carbon footprint, CLT offers a perfect way to create buildings that don't just use less carbon, but actually store it. From family homes to high-rise towers, we are now seeing the possibilities unfold in real projects across the world. So will CLT become the dominant building material of the future? Well, that depends how quickly we can adapt building codes, expand sustainable forestry, and shift the public perception. But one thing is clear. The idea of wooden skyscrapers isn't science fiction anymore. It's happening, and it could change the way our cities look and feel in the decades to come. 
So <laughs> what do you think? Do you think that the cities of tomorrow will be built from wood? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll be sure to read them all and obviously reply. And don't forget to like and share it to somebody that may be interested in a topic like this. Because the more we talk about sustainable architecture, design and construction, really the closer we are to making it a reality. Yeah, good.